so we're, so it's good about that. This is what the future is going to be. It's going to be you know matches like this over three days, and uh, we were forced to do it this way because we couldn't find a fourth team or somebody we had bailed out. So that's the reason we're going Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, so these are going to be good teams, good matches, and uh, should be fun. Um, well, I, I'm, as I said, I've been saying from the beginning, there's 14 players that can play. Everybody played the first weekend. I'd like to see a stat on the last time that happened. So uh, they're all doing a good job, and I, we're confident putting any of them in. When you look back to Kaylin's playing days, did you think she had it in her to become a coach? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but I hired her. Uh, uh, did I think she'd become a head coach? No. Uh, but, you know, I hired her. She was just coming off the Olympics. And uh, I can't remember when we hired her. I mean, there was – I wanted to get a former player back here. And uh, she was available. And, and uh, But I thought – I never thought she would end up being a head coach. But she's obviously – she's done a good job. And she – you know, her, her and Danny probably have two of the greatest turnarounds in college volleyball at their schools. So, uh, I mean, Kayla went from not winning a match to, uh, you know, going to the NCAA tournament. So, you guys can check the stat facts on that. When was the last time that happened? When she was working for you, what, what stood out about her coaching? Uh, just she, she had just come off the Olympics. She had a lot of confidence, and um, uh, she knows our program, and, and um, you know, I think she was she had uh, dabbled a little bit coaching Pepperdine men, uh, assisting or was a volunteer assistant with them. So she kind of was, you know, excited about coaching. So we just thought, let's let's go for it, see what happens. Did she have to sell you and her ability or interest in coaching? Or yeah, yeah. 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 You know, has got a great story. I mean, she you know basically came here as a walk on, was a setter, converted libero, goes to the Olympics, and. Um, you know, is considered the, the best libero in the Olympics, the best passer in the world, and and so it was. Uh, it's a great story. John, how, how rewarding is it though to see some of your former players get to these this level and doing great? It's got to yeah. be. Yeah. Sometimes I, I I like look at it with all the, you know, I was watching Chris Thomas and Caleb played Sunday, so there was two, you know, another former coach, uh, and. Um, Sometimes it's it's pretty cool to see what our program has produced, not only player-wise but coaching-wise. So we're pretty proud of that. Sometimes I don't. I think it's you know I'm not the best person to work for, but I push them and try to get them to get better and and challenge them in other ways besides just being a coach. And you know I think that's part of my responsibility is to develop coaches. Why are you hard to work for? Uh, demanding attention to detail. This generation doesn't like that so much, so it's a constant battle. I love it. I love the battle. Did you, did you think Whitney would have that kind of weekend? Did you anticipate that through spring and summer? Yeah. Yeah. I expect more from her. What, what made you think she was going to play like that? And what did you see? And she's what been on a mission. You've been on a mission all summer and, and just in practice. She's, she's starting to figure it out a little bit. Uh, last year was, you know, freshman year and just trying to survive and now I think she's on a mission she knows what she wants and she's she's gone after it she wants to play she wants to be great she got lifter of the year that's a big telltale sign right there when you talked last year about how much of an athletic freak she was too but to put in that time in the weight room how did she transform physically and athletically to where she's now yeah well she's, she's always been a great athlete it's just becoming a, a, a better volleyball player and um, she's very quick. She flies. She's fast off the floor. She's got a very fast arm. So those are a lot of things you can't coach or develop. Uh, she has those, and we can refine them. But uh, yeah, she's just she's got some talent there to work with. And again, she was a multi-sport athlete. She played basketball, ran track, and um, so you know she's a kind of a late bloomer, typical. Nebraska, uh, you know, student athlete who's multi-sports, done everything, and 
and now we'll continue developing our program. John, what do you want to see out of your team in weekend number two? Just win, baby. Oh, and I'm, I'm looking at these stats. We're last in service aces, so we're gonna we're gonna that's gonna be a hot topic today. What more do you want to see out of Whitney? What's the next step for her? Uh, just she has the confidence to take over matches and make big swings when it matters most. That's her next step. How often does a team not lose a set in its first week that have dropped from number one? I don't know. I mean, Texas. That's why we don't. You know, uh, te I mean, Texas went and had two great wins at Ohio State, so they, they they deserve it. They proved it, and we we played some good teams, but you know, they're not a. Pepperdine was not ranked top 10, so so I'm assuming that's it, but hey, great. Let them have it. Did that? Did it take you off to see that? No, no. Like I said, we don't worry about that stuff. I'm more, more worried about why we're last in aces per game. John, did you take a peek at the replay of that Texas high statement? Uh, I watched a little bit of what's going on, but no. What specific areas of improvement are you hoping to see from Kennedy heading into the second weekend? Uh, be more consistent with her setting. What does that look like? Well, it would look like every set is the same. Uh, uh, it's consistent tempo and consistent location. And she was, for a setter, she was a little inconsistent this past weekend. Are you still planning to do line up rotations, even though you're not playing multiple matches in one day back to back? Uh, I haven't got that far yet. Ye yesterday was fix it day, and and we'll see what happens today. Uh, uh, footwork, positioning, <laughs> where we start, uh, in in our serve receive patterns, blocking technique. You want me to keep going or <laughs> defensive positioning, being in the right spots, uh, working on, I, they got a big lecture about serving yesterday. Uh, and um, yeah, that, that, that was a few of the things. We, we redid our EDMF belt and they handed that out. So whoever had it, the middles had it and they gave it out. And then that, we have a necklace that they give out too that has our core values for our team on it. So that's Monday, Mondays. Adjustment for um, especially your young players. I mean, you come off weekend, you win every match, and then you come in and say, "We got to fix A, B, C, D," and, you, and they're like, "Oh, this is this is different. It's not just about." No, I think they expect that. Yeah, yeah. And they, some of we send them videos, so they kind of have a, a preview of uh, what what what's going to happen and what we're going to work on. After the matches and stuff. Sunday we send it to them, and they have a, they have an account. They can go on there and look. So um, they check it out, so they know they kind of know what's coming. Hey, um, sometimes you know, five-star freshmen in any sport, they hit adversity as freshmen, and they 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 want to bail. They want to go to a different school. What did you see in Whitney that made her that indicated to you that she wanted to come back and, and, and do better in, in season two, and not go somewhere else where she could have started or whatever? I. I mean, she knew she, she knew she had to get better. I mean, it's pretty black and white. So, hopefully, we have a bunch of kids that want to, you know, continue to get better and are patient and uh, and work. But I mean, she she I mean, I, that's not even a conversation we have to have. They, these guys know what they need to do to be on the court. We make it very clear, stat wise and performance wise, what has to happen. So she knows she could write a chapter in a book on it. More questions
That's why I said on the post game show. It was bad when uh, foreign players were going to be a little bit in this country right now. You know, bar, and I should be
and I'm gonna make the bar of it's like check around the stadium here, but yeah. So I do want to film in here for of those I want it to be fan base relationship there. I don't know what he's gonna say about it, but that's what I want. Negative. I want. What if you don't say anything in your Twitter mentions after you fumble against Michigan? That's what I want.
Um, got back from Ireland. Want to compliment our players again on how well they handled that whole trip, uh, and thank the fans again for unbelievable support over there. That pep rally was really something to um, to see. Um, obviously, really disappointed we weren't able to give the guys, people over there, a victory. Um, some things we definitely need to clean up, and uh, some other things I think we can really build on. But I've been really impressed with the way the kids answered the bell, uh, even coming off a overseas flight. So um, these guys are in a good spot right now. Questions? What do you want to see out of this week? I mean, when you look at that game last week, I mean, where are, where are the biggest improvements that need to come forward this week? Uh, I think a lot of places, it, you know, watching the tape, we played hard. The, the effort was there. Um, came down to four or five plays, probably on both sides of the ball again, that we need to execute. Um, had a couple busts on defense and misfits that cost us some big plays and cost us uh, a first down or two and that led to points. Uh, had a couple more chances on offense to score. Um, we're going to be in a lot of games where that's the case, and, and I think just detail and consistency. You mentioned the, maybe the need to be more creative offensively. Um, could you expand on that? Yeah, I didn't even realize I said that after the game. Uh, I was, I guess, kind of referring to the run game more than anything. Coach Whip's really good. He knows his stuff. Thought he did a really good job calling the game. Um, We've gotten better up front. There's no doubt about it. We're better at running back. There's no doubt about it. Um, but in, in the Big Ten, it's hard to just turn around and hand it to a back and think you're going to be real consistent. So uh, I, I think I was referring to coming off the game, just maybe having uh, a few more things in the run game that um, that are schemed for the particular opponent. Did you kind of get a chance to work with the coordinators after the game and debrief about creativity? And if, you, if so, how did that conversation Yeah, go? I don't want to get into the creativity thing. That We did a lot of really creative things on offense. And, you know, for the first two and a half quarters, I thought the offense, for having a lot of new pieces and new coaches, operated really well. Um, but I did debrief with, with both sides. And, um, you know, there's a lot of frustration and, and disappointment, um, but also some things we can build on. Scott, are you guys back on schedule after uh, the crazy travel you had over the weekend? We're kind of back now. Uh, it was tough, you know, getting back. As late, we kind of chose this that we wanted to go right back into week two. So we had meetings yesterday morning and a kind of a walk through practice in the evening instead of practicing in the morning. Turned around and had a, a similar practice today. We had uh, pads on for a while today to get a little rust knocked off and and then finished with no pads on. We're going to have a normal Wednesday. So starting tomorrow morning, we should be back on normal schedule. How much the lack of front game effect the last quarter and a half of the passing game, Casey? Or was there something that you'd like to see Casey improve on in that last quarter and a half? No, you know, it's one or two plays. Honestly, Sam, The uh, we I can think of one drive. We had the ball up four and uh, on their 40, first and 10. And I think that was the one we ended up with an interception on. And it, you know, so it's one or two plays where if, if we if we hit a play, um, leads to points. And, and that's this league. Um, in, in general, I thought, like I said, everything was great. Uh, we need to make sure that, that we execute a little better in, in those situations. And uh, I know Whip watched the fourth quarter with the, uh, with the offense yesterday. And, and up until that point, I thought we, we played really well. Um, I think we can keep coming together and being even better. Tempo is really early in the game. Obviously, Northwest can go overwhelmed on that first drive. Later in the game, um, when you guys had some three and outs, what, what's the challenge with finding the right line as to when to go fast and when fast going fast can maybe tax your defense a little? There's a line there, and then you know I, I've l learned that, and I think our staff has learned that in this league, and it, it kind of is game to game when you want to go fast and when you got the advantage and when you need to slow it down. Uh, so we're going to have to be good there. Our defense was on the field too much. Uh, part of that was probably offense. Part of that was them needing to get off the field on a couple third downs. Um, but again, to your original question, you know, I'd, Whip does so many good things, and and we do so many good things now with the uh, uh, a lot of the concepts that he's had for a long time. Um, I won't want all of us to put our heads together and find ways to create more first downs so we get more opportunities to do those things. What do you do with the tackling this week? I mean, do you do you press that issue with? With them this week now it's like starting tomorrow yeah it, overall it wasn't bad we had I, I don't know four or five or six glaring ones um open field ones give a lot of credit to their backs i thought they did a really good job at the end of 
end of runs with one last cut. And um, I, overall, I, I believe in this group. I think they're going to be a really good tackling unit. Um, you know, our long run, they missed a couple tackles. A couple of their runs, we missed a couple tackles. I, I can see that getting better as the year goes on. It's gonna, um, yeah, what's the pulse of the team right now, and how do you avoid letting a loss hang over? This is the best locker room and culture we've had, uh, the tightest team we've had um, in the building. Everybody's excited, um, disappointed, but excited. Um, we know we got to get it done this year as a staff, the team, but it, that doesn't matter. I, I want this for the kids, and we got a great bunch of kids that believe in themselves right now and, and feel like they have a lot to prove. So does it do anything to dampen <clears throat> that enthusiasm? No, uh, I think it probably only strengthens resolve. Is there anything you want to change about your game day role after your first time kind of doing it like this, or did you did you like how it it went? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I was I definitely had more conversations with special teams and defense than I've ever had, um, but I'll, I'll find my rhythm there too. When it comes to the wide receiver drops, was it all on them? Does Casey need to put it better, or, or just a case by case thing? Again, you say all the drops. You know, there was two or three that we really should have caught, uh, some other contested balls. Um, a couple of those guys are playing their, some, some, some of their first college football and definitely their first college football at Nebraska, uh, but we gotta be more efficient. So that's Jug's machine, that's getting extra catches, that's more uh, timing with the quarterback. Uh, that'll get better too. Do you expect to have Travis Volpe like this week and when he's going, what kind of weapon was he for you on Saturday? I thought he played a great first half. Uh, you know, it, I wouldn't say it hurt us, but it, it definitely kind of changed a couple of things we were thinking about doing without him in there. He's a real security blanket for us. Um, he's day to day, and we have a couple other guys that are day to day, and um, nobody that we lost for an extended amount of time. Scott, when you went unbalanced with the offensive line a bunch of times, especially the first half, what needs to, to 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 improve for those to get more push and maybe to clean the guard? Well. Defenses in this league are tough. If you if you line up and and go head to head and just try to push, uh, you don't see a lot of teams doing that anymore. Um, and again, give them a lot of credit. Uh, but there needs to be answers, and um, we'll keep getting better with that. Uh, there's a lot of good things in in some of those concepts that we do, and I think we can add to them. Is some of that two on the running back has to work in unison too to go. It's a couple of those times I saw. The running backs break open a little, little sooner. It's yeah, it's some timing and some things like that. Absolutely. Um, for, for the most part, I was really pleased with some of the runs we made at running back. Uh, when we get those guys on the second level, I think they're going to be really dangerous. Uh, and I think there's a few things we can do to help um, make sure that you know they're they're not getting touched at the line of scrimmage, but we get them on the second level and give them a few more chances. How hard was it to leave on the cutting room floor, basically a part of the game plan that worked really well last year against Northwestern and just not use it with the with the quarterback option and those things? We used it a little bit. Um, you know, again, simply said, Sam, if I was calling a game, I wouldn't want somebody else shoving a lot of things down my throat. Um, you get a rhythm as a, as a play caller. Um, you know, that's the approach I took. Whip's an elite play caller. Uh, I think that showed up in the first two and a half quarters. You see what can be done with this offense. Uh, we did run some of it. You know, if I was calling, calling it, maybe we call a little more. But I, I also wouldn't have been able to call the things he did to score us the first 28 points. So it's going to have to continue to be a, a, a marriage of different things, and, and I think we'll continue to get better at that. Was there a thought of keeping Logan on the field there for the for more plays than just the one that was successful? Yeah, he had a package and. Um, <laughs> You know, I think we probably would have done a little more of it in the fourth quarter, didn't dictate that. Uh, kind of following up on, on what Sam was asking <clears throat> with regard to the play calling, uh, you know, you might have done something different at, at a certain point and he got to the points when you needed them with some play calls. I mean, is it, you mentioned cooperation after the game. I mean, is there tension between you and Mark at all? No, not at all. Uh, it's, it's, it, he, he's, he's really smart, really good at what he does. Um, we have a lot of other coaches that are really smart, really good, good at what they do. Uh, we just need to, to find our rhythm of putting all the best stuff together. And I thought it was good on Saturday. Um, it can be better. Scott, are you able in that, in that role that you're in, 
have conversations with your assistants during the game on on personnel, um, you know, whether it's offense or defense, on on guys who are going in substitution patterns, or, or is that still something you leave to the, to the assistants? I have more time to do that now. For the most part, um, we talk about that right before the game, what the plan is for who's going to play and, and who's going to get reps. Um, and we don't we stick to that plan unless something comes up in the game that would make us alter it. Scott, do you have an update on Omar Manning timetable for his return? I'm not sure if he was Yeah, Omar was out there practicing full today, so feel good about him. Coach, I was kind of impressed with Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Can you talk a little bit about him as kind of a player? Isaiah is a great person, first and foremost, and he's a competitor. It doesn't surprise me at all that he had that kind of game. Um, he's a fighter and, and a really smart and uh, pays attention to detail, and I think that showed up uh, Saturday. What made the A.J. Allen, a guy who is a first-year freshman, is in the mix there? Uh, running back, you know, asked the question about Rotation, running back's one of the places uh, we have a lot of guys that deserve to play. There's a couple that I don't think played enough or very much at all. Um, that's going to kind of be a week to week thing a little bit, unless somebody really takes it and runs with it. I mean, guys that practice well. You know, Ramir, Ramir Johnson's a really good football player that's done a lot for this program, and he kind of got caught between playing some receiver in practice and playing running back. We got to use him more. Uh, Gabe Irvin is ready to go and healthy, and, and I'd like to see us use him. Uh, those guys can help us win football games. What's the say about the when you put him in there at the seven, at your own seven? I didn't hear you. Sir. What's it say about A.J. Allen that you put him in there at your own seven-yard line? Yeah, he, he's a pretty special kid. Um, I think he's got a bright future. He's in the mix right now, um, and we trust all those guys. How much did uh, Oshini help you guys with, with everything, field position, all that? Yeah, there's one bright spot you can really take out of it. Um, and that's as, as well as I've seen the ball punted around here for a long time. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they had more chances to pin us than, than we had to pin them and gave us some longer fields. Uh, but I feel great about that unit going forward with him punting the ball. What kind of read do you have on how much field it was? <coughs> I tell you, I'm impressed with them. Uh, I know their record wasn't good last year. They lost a lot of close games. I don't know how anybody does that for sure. Um, <laughs> they, you know, they played North Dakota State to three. They were ahead of Utah State uh, by quite a bit in the middle of the game. Um, I think they're smart with what they do. There's a lot of scheme stuff on offense that challenges you. Um, they bring a ton of heat and pressures from all over the place on defense, and you can never really count on them being anywhere. Uh, so it, it's a good challenge for us. I think it's going to make us focus on some things that, that we probably need to focus on to get that much better. Scott, you mentioned last week that uh, you just mentioned that you wanted to see more from here in the offense. Why wasn't he more part of that on Saturday? We needed some help. Uh, we thought in, with depth outside and with our depth at running back, um, I want Ramirez to be able to play both. And he took a bunch of reps outside and um, we, you know, he, he, he's, he's gotten really good at that, but it's, it's been a little bit of a learning curve. And I think he just kind of caught, caught between playing outside and playing in the backfield. And, uh, but he, he's good enough. We need to find some roles for him and make sure he has some touches. Scott, watching it back on film, what did you see from the defense out Northwestern to have that success running the football at defense? Uh, scheme. Uh, you know, I think we probably needed needed to rotate a little more with a few guys. Uh, we had some guys that played 90 snaps and came out of the game looking fresh as a daisy. I know Q, you're going to talk to Q today, and he played 90 snaps between special teams and defense and looked as fast on the 96 play as he did on the first. Um, some of the guys in the trenches, maybe there needs to be a little better rotation there to make sure we're a little fresher at the end of the game and we're not leaning too much on a couple guys, but mostly I give them credit. They, they hit us with a couple schemes in four minute drill that we hadn't seen before and uh, that we didn't practice and fit upright. And, and that led to a couple crease runs that extended a couple of those drives. Scott, it's a home opener on uh, Saturday. What are you telling your boys that uh, what they can expect in terms of playing in front of the home fans? Cause yeah, I'm really excited. We got a lot of players that never played in Memorial Stadium. I know it's going to be a special experience for them. Again, I can't uh, thank the fans that went to Ireland enough. Um, this is a neat team. I know the fans are going to be there to support them. Uh, 
don't give up on this team because this is a this is a neat group of kids, and I know uh, Husker Faith will be out to support them on Saturday. Any questions, for Coach? K Casey, okay, and all that uh, coming out. I mean, those first game you played, but just sort of a brief talk, so okay. Yeah, Casey's great. Um, I, I tell you, I, I knew Casey was a good football player. He made some plays in that game that really impressed me. Um, and that's another real positive thing. When you get a, a kid you haven't seen play live before, you don't really know what you got. Uh, we got a kid there, there that can win us a lot of football games. So uh, he can get better. We can all get better. Um, but uh, he's going to give us a chance in everyone. Coach, <laughs> offensive line was a bigger question coming into the season. How do you feel about them and their performance after week one? They did pretty well. I, th I thought our pass protection was greatly improved. You know, we dropped back and threw it a lot, and uh, Case got hit a few times, but we had one sack on a, a, just a good schemed up blitz by them on a must throw situation. Uh, another one where Casey fell down. Um, other than that, they, they did a good job giving him time to get the ball out. Casey did a good job getting the ball out. Um, you know, that unit's going to keep getting better as they play together, too. That's really their first time together as a, as a unit. I've been seeing the improvement and the work done by those guys. Um, so I feel good about the direction that, that group's going. Anything else for Coach? <clears throat> Have a good one, guys. outside the corner so maybe uh, it's not always easy to ask somebody like that you know what, what's going on in the trenches but from your perspective where did you guys do well on defense where did you struggle um I would say uh we didn't play well as a defensive unit um during that game um first half we had big mistakes um that led to touchdowns and we cleaned it up second half but we got to start out better from the start Do you feel like you went to Ireland, or is that uh, you feel 100% just like you never left? Uh, I feel the way we handled it, uh, I feel like we, we transitioned uh, well and um, just got the good amount of sleep that we needed. And I feel like we good. We back on schedule. Everybody got their legs back. And um, treatment is a large part of that, just making sure if your body's hurting that you get in there and take the time to make sure your body's feeling good. So Obviously, you guys wanted to win victory. Mm -hmm. But now that you haven't, how do you how do you keep the guys um, enthusiastic and energized, or, or, or do you get the sense that's not an issue? Um, I, I would say it's not an issue. We um, we went ahead and put that game behind us. We're moving on to the this this next week, and um, everybody's all in. Everybody's just ready to play the next game and just just get a get a win and just get this thing rolling. Was it harder going out there, or coming back, as far as adjusting your bodies? Um, I would say. I would say, um, I would say coming back probably probably would be would have been um, more of an adjustment just because we got back so late or early in the morning, um, and yeah, that. So I would say that. After that first game, where do you feel like you guys can improve the most in the secondary? <clears throat> um, just just knowing knowing your assignment, just um, communicating better, and just. Like I said, just knowing what you're supposed to do every snap, pre-snap, and just communicating, making sure everybody's on the same page. At least one player mentioned that some calls came in late. Was that how big of an issue was that in your mind? Uh, I would I wouldn't say that was a that was a big issue. That just happened. I mean, it's football. It, it, it happens. Uh, the coaches they got a job just like us, and um, I wouldn't say that was a problem for us. I, I would say that just happened. Uh, probably just really once or twice and um that's just things that you know guys got to get used to because sometimes you know offenses are moving really fast and we got to see personnel and this and that and then 
sometimes you just gotta you just gotta be ready for when the ball snaps. You think that you think this defense needs to work on tackling? I would say just just finishing tackles. Um, you know, just I mean, it was first game. You know, uh, so you know, coaches want to get keep our body fresh. So coming into the game, we weren't doing too much tackling just to uh, make sure everybody was good physically. But um, I would say yes that we need to work on our tackling. What is uh, playing here um, bring out in you, and what do you tell the guys who are on defense and haven't been in the stadium on a Saturday in the fall about what to expect this week? Uh, I would say that uh, it's, it's nothing like playing in Memorial Stadium. Um, just just the energy, just being able to play on this home field and um, just just the amount of fun that they're going to have when they get out there. And it's just exciting just uh, being able to be out there. And um, I think that helps, you know, bring a lot of energy to the team. You know, everybody knows this is our house and um, we want to defend it. So. Given it was our first starts, uh, Ever, Tommy. How did you feel like Tommy and Marquise play? Uh, I feel like they played a good game. Um, it's just, it's just little things that they need to work on. And um, you know, I, I was really happy seeing them guys be able to go out there and fly around. And um, them guys have a high ceiling. They got a lot of potential. Um, and they're just young players. Uh, but we, we fully confident in them guys, and we know that they'll get the job done. What happened on the? There was one big pass play they had. What was your, your vantage point on, on that one? Um, that was that was just a busted coverage um, in the back end. Um, it was just miscommunication, just not having your eyes on the right person at the right time, and just you know it was just it was just a bust overall. How do you uh, avoid not taking this team lightly in terms of North Dakota, your opponents, since they don't even play mm -hmm. FBS? Um, I would say uh, we we shouldn't take any opponent lightly. Um, you know. We're trying to get um, momentum going back. So we, we know this team is going to come in here and give it all they got. And it's, it's going to be a, a game. And um, we know that nobody's going to lay down for us. So we need to attack every week the same as we did, would um, on the beginning of the uh, season with the first game. So. Questions? Questions? I thought the game was, uh, we had a lot of uh, positives on the film. I mean, we had 75 plays on offense, and uh, we had 55 plays in the first three quarters with over 400 yards and four touchdowns, uh, one turnover. And then the, uh, the takeaway from it was the fourth quarter, we had about 17 plays, only like 58 or 60 yards, and two turnovers, no, uh, no touchdowns in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, we had four drives um, that I saw. Um, two of those ended with punts. Um, we had one uh, one sack in the fourth quarter. Uh, two drives ended with punts, and then two drives ended with turnovers. So I mean, we played good for three quarters on, on offense. Uh, in the fourth quarter, we didn't score any points, and that was the only quarter that we didn't score any points the whole game. Northwestern scored more points, and I mean, the team that scores more points wins the game. So. Casey, on the pick where you're going to Oliver, was there anything you could have done differently on that, or that just like a little timing? No, um, it, they went one high man on that play. It was third and nine, I believe. Uh, we had just crossed the 50, so we're moving the ball well. And uh, no, I mean, uh, he ran a good route. Uh, like I said, it was one high man. I threw it right over the Mike linebacker. He tried to jump up and tip it. Ball went right over the linebacker's head. Uh, I threw it with timing and anticipation. Uh, Oliver was trying to get his head around. He was getting tugged a little bit. The DB made a good play. He did a technique called slingshot. He slingshotted himself into the play. So he kind of ran with Oliver, pulled himself into the play, and then tracked the ball. So um, the DB did a really good job of uh, just tracking the ball a little bit better on that play. Um, like I said, Oliver was getting ready to uh, try to hold the defender off on his back. He just didn't get his head around his and his hands up quick enough. Uh, I think it was a great ball. I threw it with confidence. Um, like I said, it was third and nine. Trey, Trey Palmer ran a, uh, ran a, we ran switch verticals, and Trey shut it down on the outside. 
I didn't know for sure if Trey was going to get the, enough depth to get the first down, so that's why I went with Oliver on the scene. Um, but no, I thought it, I thought it was a good ball. Like I said, it's just unfortunate play, and uh, the DB made a play on it. It's going to happen sometimes. Casey, how important is it this week just to get better balance and rhythm with the run game mm -hmm. in the offense? Yeah, I mean, um, you have to be able to run the ball. Um, anytime you can run the ball and have success on the ground, that sets everything up. You know, you can control the clock, um, able to get ahead of the chains on first and second down and not have to pass it. You know, we had 42 pass attempts. Um, you know, going into the game, I don't know if we would like to have more or less than that, but whatever it takes to win on offense. But if we can establish a good run game, that's obviously going to help, um, you know, every team that we play. Casey, those specifics that you mentioned with Oliver on that pick, is that something where you go to him and want to talk and you generally want to do with the receiver when there's a play that where you don't yeah. you don't mesh? I mean, I, I just asked him after a play, hey, what happened? I, I, I saw him the whole way. He was running. Um, so, it, like I said, it was one high man. The safety's in the middle of the field. All I had to do was beat the linebacker with the throw. I threw it over the linebacker's head. There was nobody in the middle of the field. Uh, Oliver was one-on-one. -on -one. He had the DB on his left shoulder. So I put the ball right here. Um, the DB actually just reached around and kind of just grabbed it. Uh, I asked Oliver what happened. He said he was getting held a little bit and didn't get enough time to get his head around. Um, I watched it back on. I watched it on the replay. Watched it on film as well. Right as the ball was in the air, Oliver's um, head was getting jerked this way. So when the ball was coming, he didn't get to get his head and eyes around. Is that pretty normal for you to have those conversations? In yeah, I mean, any any incompletion, I, if it's my fault or the receiver's fault, I mean, I I go over to the receiver right away and ask okay. what happened. Um, and then if it's just like a pure drop or a bad, like say say if I make a bad throw, I'll go over and tell him, hey, that's my bad. I got to put it in a better spot. Or if, uh, if it's like a, a miscue, I'll go ask him, hey, what happened? What did you see on that? Did you see the coverage? How was he defending you? Um, what kind of leverage did you have? Even whenever I don't throw it to certain receivers, I still go ask them after the play or on the sideline, did you win on this route? You know, let's say we have an eight play drive. I'll, I'll ask all the receivers that were in that drive, hey, when you ran this comeback, how, how, did, he, how did he defend you on that play? Who, what number was it to the field? You know, was it number 13? Was it number two? Was it number 11? Um, different stuff like that. So I do that at practice every day, also doing the game. Hey, when tempo's working and you get to that first drive, you guys pretty clearly overwhelmed them. What's the line between making sure that you know you're using tempo the right way, and then those times when maybe it, it you, you get off the field too quickly and it burns your defense? Um, I mean, I think I think we did a good job of using the tempo to our advantage on on Saturday. Um, obviously, you guys know we were moving the ball down the field. Um, and up and th up through like two or three quarters, we had one punt. So I mean, we were moving the ball down the field. Um, and like I said, we just turned the ball over, stopping ourselves. Um, we went 75 plays, no penalties. That was the first time that we had a scrimmage or a game in a long time here at Nebraska with zero penalties. Um, I think we had like one sack, um, well two technically because I tripped, but uh, we had one sack the whole game. So like I said, there's really a lot of positives and takeaways, but the tempo is something that we like to use to our advantage. We know we know how to slow down too, and you know control the clock when we need to. But um, like I said, we just have to establish a little bit better run game to be able to, to control the clock. Are there moments where you want to tell Whipple or Frost, "Hey, I can run the ball. If you need me to run the zone read, no. I can." I, can do I mean, that. honestly, we go we practice run and pass plays during the week. Um, quarterback run, running back run plays. We, we practice inside zone, outside zone, um, scramble drill, drop back pass, play action, boot, sprint outs. I just tell them. The night before the game, we go over all the plays and during the week, and they say, hey, are you good with this play? Or are you not? They ask me, is there anything you don't like? What are your favorite plays? I, use, I go into the game and say, I'll like everything. I'll, whatever you call, I'll run it. So if they call a run play, I'll run the ball. If they call a pass play, I'm going to throw it. So, um, But no, I usually don't, um, unless I, I know for sure I'm out on the field. Because the coaches, if they're in the press box on the sideline, they don't see what the quarterback can see in the offensive line. We're actually out there. so. If there's something that I know will work, I'll go tell them, like, hey, we should run this play. But no, I mean, I thought it was a pretty good game, um, good play calls. Um, like I said, it was 75 players on offense, and um, not a lot of complaints about the play calls um, from my end. I think that uh, every run and pass play that we had, we could have executed. We just have to make a few changes, changes and adjustments. Is it better to have a game right away to look kind of flush what happened last week as opposed to having a buy and yeah. sitting out a little longer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Right after the game, you know, you feel defeated. But I mean, as soon as you wake up on Sunday, at least for me and in this team, um, I think it's important to try to move on. Um, on Sunday, the main takeaway was to correct the issues 
acknowledge the mistakes, but also, you know, see what we did well and then improve on the positives. Um, yesterday's practice was very important um, for us uh, as we went out on Monday's practice, just to try to stay positive, stay energetic, um, stay encouraged, and uh, push one uh, push one another to have a great practice. Um, and we did a good job of that yesterday. Um, we have good leadership on this team. We had a really good practice yesterday. Had a great practice today as well. So, uh, like I said, we're going to be fine. We just have to move forward. We can't let one game beat us twice. Um, like I said, today is Tuesday, and the game was, you know, two days ago, three days ago. So we have to move on from it. What does North Dakota kind of look like on defense? Have you kind of gotten to figure them out yet? Yeah, yeah. I've watched them. Um, I started watching them on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening. And uh, they, uh, they play really hard. Um, they've had their defensive staff together for at least three years now. Um, number three, their corner cornerback stands out on film. Uh, he's a very good athlete. Um, they have four players from Nebraska, three players from Oklahoma. One of them came from NEO, uh, junior college in Oklahoma, I'm very familiar with. Um, and uh, like I said, this is their first game. Um, they're usually undefeated on their on their first week, first game uh, season openers. And uh, I mean, they're a good football team they had. Watching the film, they had 11 games last year with um, they had either the lead or had a chance to take a lead in the fourth quarter. So can't take them lightly, but um, they run a, a lot of different coverages. Um, uh, they run a lot of different pressures and blitzes. Uh, they run 3-4 front. They run 4-3. So they've shown a lot of variety on film, and uh, but we'll be okay. I mean, we have to trust our training and just be able to know that we know football and we've practiced enough against all the different looks, so we'll be ready. What would it mean to get to Omar Manning back? to this offense? Omar, I mean, uh, Omar is, I'm always trying to uh, encourage and, and push our guys. And But um, Omar is a uh, very big receiver. He's talented, very fast, has good hands, uh, good route running. And he brings a lot of physical uh, presence to the, to the receiver room. And uh, it'll be great to have him back. Uh, like I said, he's a good receiver. And he's a good player. So uh, just building on his, his athleticism, his physical tools, um, and just getting him more confidence and more reps. I mean, I mean, it's week two or week one for us. Technically, Omar hasn't played in a game since last year. So um, last week was really good for all the guys that got to play to get that that game speed back and to get those live game reps. Even for me, that was the first time that I got hit since uh, Thanksgiving last year. So it was good to get in that game, but it'll be good to have Omar Omar back uh, for the rest of the season. Casey, what are you expecting uh, playing a game at Memorial Stadium? Saturday. Uh, yeah, this will be my first live game. I mean, I got to play in the spring game here for, I think, like nine plays. Uh, through like four passes or whatever it was, five passes. Yeah, but it's different when it's the game. So I'm excited to get in front of the fans. Um, Husker Nation here at uh, Memorial Stadium. It'll be fun. And uh, But on game day when I go out there, like I said, it's just we're going to war with the same guys that we practice with every day. So I try to really tune out a lot of the noise and the crowd noise and stuff like that. But It'll be fun on Saturday to get back, get out there for the first time and, and see everyone. Um, I'm personally excited to have my family come. Uh, they didn't get to travel to Ireland. So it'll be good to have 10 to 15, however many people are coming to the game this week. Um, my family, so that'll be good. What's been your impression of the fans just being out and about and seeing them around town? I think the fans here are really passionate. Um, and like I said, I, mean, I come from a football family. I, I'm from Oklahoma. I played at Texas, so kind of used to uh, diehard fans. but. I definitely think, that, like I said before, it's a close community here, um, the Nebraska fan base. And uh, I just think there's a lot of Husker fans around the town, in the airport. Uh, I'll never forget when I came. Uh, when I first came here in January, I was flying in from LaGuardia Airport, and uh, there were Nebraska fans on the flight. Uh, and then at the Omaha airport that recognized me. And that was before I, I even had even announced it. I was trying to stay low key, you know. But um, there's Nebraska fans everywhere. so. Uh, I really enjoy it, and uh, I'm very thankful and appreciative for the diehard fans. And I just ask everyone to, like I said, to stick with us. And um, inside the building, we're trying to stay positive. So uh, that's the main thing. How's your body reacclimated back to central time, and how big a deal is that to be totally back on track for Saturday? Yeah, um, honestly, I slept great on both flights. Um, I took some uh, sleep medicine, allergy pills, and uh, I slept over seven hours on the flight there. I only woke up because the flight attendant said we're landing. And then on the way back, uh, I didn't have to take anything, but I slept again for at least seven and a half hours. So both flights, by the time we got there, I just stayed awake for the rest of the day and kind of got acclimated that way. Um, but by Sunday night and Monday, I felt pretty normal. And I think that most of us should be over the jet lag. Uh, not everybody got to sleep. I know it's not easy for everyone to sleep on the plane, but 
Uh, when you play a full quarter game like that, I think it's easy to fall asleep. So my body feels fine. And like I said, a little bit sore from the game. My first time getting hit in, uh, since uh, week 12 last year. So my shoulders, my ribs, my torso, got, took a few hits to the shin, stuff like that. But I mean, I feel fine. And uh, like I said, practice has been great. So I'm back to normal and ready to go. Casey, you've been around a lot of football. I mean, what have you seen that, that makes you think this team is, is reacting well you know, to, to this loss? Uh, you know, like I, I've been playing football since I was four years old, so a long time. But uh, this is my first time on this team. Uh, like I said, it's a new team. There's a lot of new faces, new coaches. Um, but I think that we're reacting well by our body language, uh, the energy at practice, um, just kind of the overall demeanor around the building. Um, like I said, we've had great practices. We're still having good meetings and stuff like that. The coaches aren't freaking out and stuff like that. So um, I don't know. I think pressure is more of an outside noise thing. And I think internally in the building, I think that we're fine. And we just have to focus on doing our job and continue to play football and execute um, how we know how to execute for four quarters. But we have to be prepared to play four quarters every week. So that's the main thing. And then uh, one thing that I wanted to say, just to inform you guys, uh, I was asked a question last week by one of you about uh, how does the uh, skill skill depth uh, here compare to at Texas. Um, but I just thought I'm, I'm very close with those guys over at Texas. And I just want to say I uh, wish them best of luck this season. And I'm still close to a lot of the players. And actually, I got a lot of texts and calls um, from the players after the game last week. They were watching uh, DeMar Vion Overshawn, their line, starting Mike linebacker over there. Uh, I still keep in touch with Bijan Robinson. Uh, Roshan Johnson's our running back over there, team captain, a really good player. And uh, But I just want to say I respect them. But um, moving forward from here on out, I uh, don't want to really be asked questions about you know Texas because I'm trying to focus on Nebraska and moving forward with this team. Um, and I'm always trying to encourage the players and stuff that we have here. But um, I was asked a question last week about uh, how does the skill set depth compare here at Texas, and I said, we have more depth, and a lot of the Texas fans and media, of course, took it to, to say we. I, Casey Thompson said that the skill set depth at Texas wasn't very good, and you know I never said anything like that. So I don't want to stir the pot about anything, and I'm not trying to go down that path. But like I said, I wish them the best of luck. I have a lot of respect for Coach Stark and that team. They've always had talent. You know, talent's never been an issue. They have a really good team, really good coach. Um, B. John Robinson is one of the best athletes and running backs I've ever been around. Xavier Worthy is one of the best route runners. Um, like those guys deserve everything that's going their way. But moving forward, I just want to talk about Nebraska football, um, the games that we have at hand and the issues that we have here. So uh, nothing but respect for those guys. So I appreciate you guys, and uh, thank you. How y'all doing? How you feeling after the trip, Caleb? The, the jet lag and just kind of getting back to Nebraska. Um, I'm feeling good. Getting back to work, putting some more work in. Um, yeah, I feel good. I feel good right now. Caleb, what was sort of your evaluation of the, of the first game, and and what what do you want to see that? Your guys stepping forward. I want to see us bounce back and uh, put that one behind us. You know, uh, unfortunately, it didn't go the way we all wanted it to go. You know, and I take full responsibility for that as a leader. You know, um, like I said in the last interview a couple of days ago, I said whatever when we win is going to fall back on the captains. When we lose, it's going to fall back on the captains. And uh, like I said, I take full responsibility for that L. I didn't get my guys prepared correctly for what was to come. And, uh, yeah, we're here to work and get better. And It's a new week. Oh, yeah. What specifically do you want to see from the defense as far as improvement goes? What specifically? Um... Probably just fixing the corrections from last game. That's always the first step. Come back Sunday, Monday, fix the corrections, see where we where it was wrong at. Um, 
We can always do better running to the ball. That's that's number one. That's how you that's defense right there, running to the ball. We can always do better at tackling. So just get my guys ready to practice going hard from the jump, like Monday through Saturday. That's what it is. Practicing uh practicing like a pro. And that's what I'm trying to get my guys to do. And what you saw uh throughout fall camp, what was the biggest difference on game day? What was the biggest difference? Um like I said, I don't feel like it was, it was just no different. It's just we, like I said, we just, just, that's, it wasn't no difference, boss. I just, we went out there, we worked hard. Um, I felt like we put our all in, but we just came up short. And um, like I said, I take full responsibility. We just didn't do enough. It wasn't enough what we did. Um, and we're here to work, get better. Won't let it happen again. That's it. Hey, hey Caleb, uh, you guys were on the field a lot, late stages of the game. Um, was there a level of fatigue at all that you think impacted the defense? Oh, no, sir. I don't think we were fatigued. I don't think we were fatigued. Um, probably fatigued mentally. Mentally, yeah. Fatigued mentally. Uh, people got tired. People, uh, Long assignments of people not doing their job, and uh, that's what it came down to. Everybody got to do their job, job. Everybody got to do their job. Um, everybody got to tackle. Everybody got to run to that ball. And that's just how. It, that's just how it is right now. Oh, it's not like I don't know if y'all trying to find like a little answer, like a like an answer to why we lost. But it's just as simple as that. We got to play some some better defense, aggressive defense. That's what it is. Run to the ball. It's that simple. Make the tackle. So, I'm surprised you weren't able to get to the quarterback as a team. Was I surprised? Why you were unable to, to get any sacks or as a team? Yeah, I'm surprised because you know we 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 got a good group. We got a good D line group. We got a good pass rush group. So I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised. But like I said, we we here to work, and we gonna keep on working. And we're going to keep on getting better. And Dawson going to keep on making sure he, we, we're getting better and better every day. So uh, that's all I'm focused about right now. Uh, yeah. What's it, what's it mean to you to play in that stadium? Been here Memorial years. Stadium? What does it mean to me? Shoot, it means everything, dog. We finna, man. It means everything. Everything, boss. Everything. Everything. Memorial Stadium, man. My fault. Do I tell the guys? Um, get ready for the ride. Get ready for the experience. Um, shoot, as you know, I lost some and won some in that stadium. I've been through the ups and downs of this, you know. Um, shoot, tell the guys have fun. Go out there and play, 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 man. Play hard. That's, that's really all I could tell them to shoot. Get them ready during the week. So on Saturday, we're going out there and having fun. So we practice harder in the, during the week than we were playing the game because the game's supposed to be easy. During the week, supposed to be harder than the game. So You've been around the program a long time, Caleb. What have you learned about just how to – move on after a loss and, and turn that focus to the next one and not get um, this one I ain't gonna lie this one was kind of hard though for some reason this one was kind of hard usually you know I'm on to the next one but um this one is emotionally hard because you know we put that grind in and I felt like this team right here was like I feel like this team right here is like man we the one like the one to bring Nebraska back to where it was so it's hard but like I said, I take full responsibility of that. And coming with that, we got to get back to work. It's like you don't, we, don't, we ain't got time to soap about it, cry about it. Like we got to get back to work, and that's all I'm worried about right now. Hey, Caleb, when we talk to um, coaches and players about your journey to where you started and where you are as a captain, everybody use how how far you've come growth wise. How how were you able to do it, and and, and how much have you grown since you started here at Nebraska? How was I able to do it? Man, just keep having an open ear, I guess. Listening to people. Um, not being hard-headed. 
you know, some folks are hard headed. They don't want to listen. They they think everybody. They think they right all the time. You know, um, just realizing that I'm not right all the time, and um, that I probably do have some stuff to fix and stuff like that. And uh, that's what I came to do. Just you know, with time comes maturity. You know, mentally, I I learn stuff. You know, um, really, that's it. I just matured, man. Growing up, man. That's what it is. I came here as a young head, and I'm in here as an old head. So, to grow up, like, was there a thing that just clicked to you? Um, yeah. When when I realized, like, shoot, I'm the oldest. Really, like, the old head on defense. So, shoot, like, what I'm, I'm not finna sit here and let some young dudes tell everybody what to do. When I, when that's a good thing, though, but. Leadership, like leadership, different. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta lead your truth, man. You can't just have everybody leading. You gotta teach the leaders how to lead. Then once they see how to lead, then the younger group of below them can see how to lead. Then it's just like a foundation of leadership. That's what it is. Did you learn anything about yourself as a leader, Tyrone? Learn anything about myself? Um, probably that I need to. L- Shoot, learn how to get my guys more prepared to win. You feel me? Like, um, I t- like, man, when I tell you I take full responsibility at all, I feel bad, man. Because my guys deserve it all, man. Them folks, we went out there, fall camp, spring, man, killing it. So, it's a tough one, most dev, but I promise you we back to work, though. It was back to work on Saturday when we landed, so. Man, we were. Thank you guys. Appreciate y'all.